The callout is an option within our Promax streams here, and this is going to allow us to display information about any stream within Promax. So I'm going to drag that out to display some information about my stream number one. When I drag it out, I get the tail close to stream one, and you'll see a little gray dot that appears. That's going to be my connection point, and so I need the end of the tail to connect to that gray dot. So when I drag this up to the gray dot, we'll see that box appears. This is gluing to our connection point. And when I let go, this callout is now connected to that stream. To decide what information I want to display about that stream, I can double click on the block. And this will now allow me to add any properties, any analysis information, if I have analyses I've done in this stream, and any compositional information, such as my mole fractions of particular components. That can all be displayed on the page. So as an example, I'm going to open up the properties, and we'll see a list here of different properties that we could select. I'm going to choose temperature. Below the selection window, you'll see a phase selection. And the default is the total phase, but if you wanted a property for the vapor, or the liquid, or the mixture of a light and heavy liquid, those are other phases are available to you. I'm going to leave this as the total phase. Click on temperature, and then push this right arrow button to put that now into my displayed properties selection. I can add other properties as well, so if I want to add pressure as well, I can actually just double click on pressure. And when you double click on a property, that will also put it here on the right into our display. If I want to rearrange the order of these two properties, I can single click on pressure. And then if I want to move pressure to the top, I'll click on it a second time. And this time, hold down the mouse and drag that up to the top. And now when I let go, that will come out above temperature. You'll see each of these properties has its units with it. And so there is a drop-down menu. You can change to whatever types of units you would like this displayed at in. And there's also a number of significant figures that we can set for each of these properties. Beyond properties, if I come and close the property section, there's an analysis section. I can open that. I'll see a list of my different analyses. And I'll open up my phase envelope. And let's say I also want to display my critical temperature and pressure. I can double click on both of those, and those will now be displayed. And then the last thing I mentioned was composition information. If I close that and open composition, we can add these composition, this composition info by basis or by species. I'm going to choose by basis, which brings out the different type of bases we have. And I'll choose a mole fraction, and I can come in and choose whatever components I'm interested in. So I'm just going to choose one for this example. Okay, so this is all the information we're going to display. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And so we can take a look at that, and that will print out this table. And we'll talk about the different options we have to kind of customize the way this table looks. The default might take up a lot of space, and so we might want to trim down on the words and, and make this look a little nicer for us. A few other things while we're looking at this. At the very center of the table, you'll see a gray dot or a gray box. And that's your drag point for this call out. So if I click on that gray box, I can drag my, ta my table around. And so it's not in the way anymore. If you try to click and drag anywhere else, you're going to grab the entire table. And you'll see that the tail is no longer connected. And so if I want to leave the tail connected, I need to just grab this little gray box. You can also copy callout boxes. So if I'd like to display the same information on another stream, with this callout selected, I can click Control C and then click Control V, and that will print out another copy. Right now, it's not connected to any stream, so it has the same numbers in it. But if I connect it to another stream, like stream 13, it will then update to fill in the information for that stream instead. And so that's a really quick way to copy and paste those. Now let's talk about some more of the edi editing features we have available. So I'm going to double click here to get back inside my callout. And let's look at some of these buttons down here that are available. First off, this Show Horizontal option. And this will allow us to show information about the different phases in our stream side by side. So if I select that, you'll see this phase selection now changes and I can choose whichever phases I'd like 
to be put in, in side by side columns. And if I click OK, you'll see that is now printed out as so. We don't have any light liquid in this stream, and so those boxes are blank. But that's how you would go about doing that. If I double click again, let's look at some of our other options. I'm going to uncheck that horizontal option. Below that, we'll see an include analysis name. So you can see here on our page, it says the analysis is named phase envelope. If I don't want to display that, I can uncheck it. And that will kind of condense my table down. Similarly, if I don't want to display what phase this information comes from, I can remove the phase. If I do that, just one thing to keep in mind is total phase becomes the default for all our properties. And so if you want some properties for vapor and some for light liquid, uh, then you won't want to uncheck this display individual phases because when this is unchecked, everything is for the total phase. Going up this list, the override units button, what that will do is it will tell Promax to ignore whatever units I have selected for all these properties and instead just use the default units for this project and that can help your units be consistent in, in all levels. Above that is an update always button and so these proper, excuse me, these callout boxes will will update whenever Promax is not executing. But if you want it to update during execution, so say during the iterations of a recycle block, you could have it continuously update or update always. That's going to slow things down a bit and usually isn't necessary. And so generally, you don't need this box checked, but that is an option for you. These last six boxes are all about the appearance of our callout. So the show line option is saying to show the tail that connects to the stream, but you don't have to show that if you don't want. You can also choose whether or not to show the grid, and then to show the symbols. And what the symbols means, if I look at some of these properties, they have the little star, the little asterisk next to them. That represents that these are values that are user input values, or values that I've typed in. The other symbol you'll see is a pound sign which represents a value that's being controlled um, by a solver or a specifier. So if you don't want those symbols to show up, you could unselect that. If you don't want to see the borders around the table, that's an option. The titles, and the titles is here where it says, you know, this is my property section, analysis section, and composition section. So I can get rid of those titles. You can also get rid of the labels. And the labels is the actual name of the property. So if I don't need it to say pressure and temperature and all these names, I could get rid of the labels as well. Beyond that, you also have control over things such as the font. By clicking on this font button, you'll see a new window that appears. And what this window allows us to do is choose what font we'd like to see, whether we want to bold anything or increase the font size. We can change the color of the font. So all these font options are available. I'm just going to leave those alone. And the last button, our last option as far as the presentation goes, is this color button. If I bring that up, it's going to change, or I can change, the color of the grid itself, which is currently a blue color. But I could change that to any other color and click OK. Let's click OK again and take a look at what it looks like now. Okay, and so we can see that that's kind of condensed everything for us. I'll double click one more time and show you just the last two things. First off, there's this copy grid to clipboard button. And that is going to copy all the data that's in this grid. And so you can then control V to paste that into like Excel. So if you want to copy this information somewhere else, you can check that box. There's also this orientation section. So if instead of it being a horizontal table, you'd like it to be you know, sideways facing up or down, you can change the orientation. And I guess the last thing that I haven't mentioned is this significant figures section. If you want to change the number of significant figures for all the properties, so if I want them all to change to 3, I can say 3 and set, and you'll see that all my significant figures have now changed to 3. Okay, and so that's just a few other options you have when it comes to editing your call-out boxes.